Hello. And when your BBC Micro arrived, I would imagine that the first thing that you did was to read through the welcome booklet that came with it. And having read through that, I expect you played all the programs on the welcome cassette. And these will have given you a fair idea of just what the machine is capable of. Now, since then, you may have bought other programs, games perhaps, or business programs. But sooner or later, you're going to want to write your own programs to do something that you're interested in. Now, obviously, I can't tell you what to write programs about. That will depend on you. But what I can do during the next hour or so is set you on the right road as regards designing programs and writing them in BASIC. Now, before we start looking at the individual statements that make up the BASIC language, I think it'll be useful if we spend just a couple of minutes looking at the inside of the machine to see what goes on in there. And the best way to do that, I think, will be on a piece of paper. Now, inside your machine is a large area of memory. Memory in which information is stored. Now, some of this is available for you to use, and some of it is already full. Let's divide it up like this. In part of the memory, there is what we call the machine operating system. And this is a series of instructions whose job it is to control the machine, to control your television display, to control your cassette recorder. Now, we also have what's called the basic interpreter. And this is a program whose job it is to understand the basic statements that you write, to make sure that they are correct, and then to execute them. And then in the rest of this storage, we have your program. If we write your program here, and remember these are the statements that you will write, we'll also require an area called the screen memory. And into this part of the memory will go all the information that needs to be shown on the television screen. Now, we don't have to be concerned too much at the moment about what's happening in the machine operating system and what's happening in the basic interpreter. What we're going to be doing is writing the basic statements to go into the program area of the memory. And those basic statements will, among other things, make things appear on the screen. Now, let's look in a little more detail at what happens inside that program area. Now, your program will be written as a series of lines of coding, as a series of statements. And every one of those statements is going to be numbered. For example, we might number them 10, 20, 30, 40. You'll see in a moment why I haven't numbered them 1, 2, 3, 4, but why I've left gaps between those numbers. Now, these numbers are very important because it's only by looking at these numbers that the basic interpreter knows in which order these statements are to be used. Here, we've got number 10 before number 20, before number 30, before number 40. Well, that's the theory. Now, let's look to see what that's like on the screen. What you can see here is the first six lines of a much larger program. The program is, at the moment, sitting in the computer's memory. And I've asked it just to list the first six lines. And you can see the line numbers I was talking about, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, at the beginning of each line. Now, the way I asked the computer to list the program is by using a list command. Down here, on the left-hand side, you can see the flashing cursor, and you can see a little arrowhead. When you see these two together, it means the computer is ready to accept a command. And the command I used was a list command. 
simply L-I-S-T. List by itself would ask the computer to print out the whole program on the screen. Watch. As soon as I press the return key to show the end of the command, every line in the program was printed on the screen. And there were far too many of them to be seen on the screen at the same time. And so the ones I was interested in were lost from the top of the screen. If I only want to list a few of the lines in my program, then I have to use a slightly more complicated list statement. List followed by the first line, 10, a comma, and the last line, 60. This command says, list out my program starting at line 10 and finishing at line 60. Now, when I press return at the end of the command, I get exactly those lines printed out and no others. Now, the way they are at the moment, it's slightly difficult to read.